so my son and I just had the Pinewood Derby for his Cub Scout troop, and I wanted to show you a video of how I built the car that I ran in the Outlaw race, which did take first place, as well as what we did for my son's car. <laughs> so here's a look at how this Pinewood Derby car is gonna work. This is just kind of the testing phase here. The uh, blower here is actually from a hair dryer we had in one of our downstairs bathrooms that I kind of raided. I took out all the heating elements, of course, since those aren't needed. Of course, the handle's gone. Um, I'm powering it with three nine volt batteries. These are lithium batteries, um, so I get longer life out of them and lighter weight. And then because the three batteries are connected together, I get 27 volts out of it. So I get a pretty decent uh, thrust out of the motor, as you saw in the, in the first part of the video. Uh, I went ahead and added some LED lights, and so that's just for decoration. This is just an on-off switch to control the, uh, the power to the system. So here's a completed Pinewood Derby car that I built for the Outlaw race. Uh, I have the original wood base that you get with the kit, as well as the wheels, um, polish the axles and the wheels as usual. I actually used part of a Pringles can um, on the back, or uh, this is actually the front side here, uh, where the air goes in. And uh, mostly I wanted to cover up the, the uh, sharp edges around the screen here, which kind of keeps this, the hair and things like that from, from going into the, into the, uh, the fan. And uh, then I wrapped some plastic around that, hot glued all that on there. Um, I also glued some styrene to the sides. All the electronics and stuff are in here. Well, there's not really much electronics. It's basically three nine volt lithium batteries. There's also a set of batteries that power the LED lights I have on the back. On the original prototype, I had a switch on the side. I have the power switch on the back. This power switch controls both the fan power and the power to the lights. Um, I had, it's a dual pole, dual throw uh, switch, and so there is, uh, there's six inputs. So one set does the fan and one set does the LEDs. And then I have on the front here, this is a, again, a sensor. And so you can wire this to actually be, again, normally open or normally closed. So the switch is normally closed, which means power is normally gonna go through the circuit. Um, however, when this button is depressed, power will not go through the circuit. And so uh, during the Pinewood Derby, when it's at the start line and it's up against the starting pin, that pin will push in this, this little uh, uh, you know, piece of metal here, and that will keep the circuit from going for the fan. The lights will still come on though. And then uh, once the gate drops, this will spring out, the fan will turn on, and that will help to accelerate it down the track into the finish line. I call it Polar Vortex because uh, it has a fan, so there's a, a vortex of air there, and, and I'm a meteorologist, and so I thought it'd be a fun play on that. And so that's pretty much it. The wires are all, I just basically routed out a, a channel here and uh, put the wires in there, hot glued them in there, and then covered everything up with some wood putty. Didn't really sand it too well because I didn't really care. It's on the bottom. Uh, painted everything black, and pretty much that is how, how it works. Again, if I depress the front, turn the power switch on the back here, the LED lights will come on. And then if I release this button in the front, it will turn on as well. So, so anyway, that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. So anyway, with my son's car, I'll just go over a few quick things here. Um, so really the best video I've ever seen on Pinewood Derby cars is Mark Rover's video. I'll put a link to that right up here. Uh, he has a, a great explanation of how to maximize the speed of your Pinewood Derby car. But anyway, I'll kind of show you what my son and I did to help maximize his car. Um, we had a clinic actually uh, where we went to a local hardware store and you could cut everything out so the kids could basically actually uh, you know, design their car shape and, and use the tools there to, that they have a bandsaw and things like that that they could use to cut out the shape of their car. So we went there one day with the, with the Cub Scouts and uh, we cut the shape of this car out. So we did all of that there using the tools at the hardware store. We had to finish doing some sanding at home. And so that was kind of one of the main things at home was just to finish getting everything kind of smooth. Uh, really what I want to talk about though is basically the two, the two things you need to do to maximize the speed of your Pinewood Derby car. One is to maximize the potential energy, which is basically keeping the center of mass of the car as high off the ground as possible when it's on the track. So the track, the car is sitting at the top of the track uh, the pins down here at the start gate, you wanna have the center of mass of the car as far back as possible. Now, one thing that you need to make sure you do is not get the center of mass behind the back wheel or the car will do a wheelie. And so we actually, the original axle hole was here. We drilled a hole farther back for both of the wheels. And so the wheels are at the very back of the car. And so this way we could put the weight right back here that we added and that won't, uh, and, the, and the car won't do a wheelie because the weight is basically over and just in front of the back axle. 
Um, now we did drill holes here in the top of the car and put in some tungsten weights. So the car is exactly five ounces. There, there's a five ounce weight limit for the race. You wanna have your car at five ounces to maximize that potential energy um, as much as possible. So if your car is like four ounces, it's probably not gonna win um, if a bunch of other cars are right at five ounces. So you wanna basically maximize that weight. The other uh, aspect of, of having a fast car is minimizing friction. And so the areas where friction comes in is basically the wheels and the axles. Now here, my son's car actually in one of the races broke off part of the, uh, the wood here where the axle was in. The axles are basically just nails. The nails have lots of burrs and grooves and things like that in them because they're nails and they're designed to you know, grip into wood. And so you need to basically get a file um, and some sandpaper. You can get some polishing compound too if you really wanna go at it and basically put the nails in a drill and then use the file, you know, turn the drill on and use the file and sandpaper to basically smooth out the nail as much as possible. Because you wanna have a nice smooth surface on the nail to, again, let the wheel spin smoothly and not be grinding against grooves and burrs in the nail. And so that will help it uh, spin longer and easier and faster. Also, the inside of the wheel bore can be polished a little bit. That can help as well. You may find that there is little, you know, plastic burrs and things, or maybe like a seam where it was molded something like that inside the wheel bore. And so if you polish that, that can help a little bit as well. Uh, you also wanna get some graphite powder um, and get that on the wheel, on the axle, as well as the inside of the wheel. Uh, that will help basically fill in any grooves in the nail or the wheel, and it will allow it to spin much faster as well. Also, make sure you have some here on the outside underneath the nail head. Uh, that can also uh, help a lot, especially if you have any type of grooves or you know imperfections in either the wheel or the nail head itself, because that will kind of grind together there on the outside. We also raised up one wheel in the front. So basically the, the back two wheels and the front left wheel, if you're looking at it this way, um, are touching the track. This wheel does not touch the track. So basically that reduces friction because you're only using three wheels instead of four. So that does help a little bit as well. And lastly, we tilted the axles at about two and a half degrees, which will keep the wheels sort of like this. So they kind of uh, tilt out a little bit. Uh, and that basically is when it's going on the, down the track, the force, it kind of forces the wheels away from the side of the car and helps prevent the wheels from rubbing on the side of the car, which uh, again, if that happens, that'll slow it down a little bit as well when it's on that straight part of the track, especially towards the end. And so that's really all, all the, the key is there. You want to basically have the, uh, the weight as far back as you can, have it be at five ounces and polish the axles and wheel bores uh, so they will spin as long as possible and as freely as possible. So anyway, those are just a couple of tips you can use when you're doing your car. But again, the Mark Rober video, which I'll have a link to um, below and, and up here, is really the best video to watch. It kind of explains everything you need to know about how to do a Pinewood Derby car and to make it really fast. So anyway, that's a look at our Pinewood Derby cars. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Bye.